Hi, how you guys doing? And welcome back with Mess Deception with me, your girl, No Fuses. Um, I guess we're gonna start off with her journey now that we finally got her name Haku. Like from Samurai Jack. <laughs> we're called Haku now. So let's get to it. And if you guys like this video or this series or even just the channel, then uh, please don't hesitate to destroy that like and subscribe button. And let's get into it. She's too bright out here. Well, I guess the sun still rises no matter where I am. Still, what am I supposed to do now? How are you feeling, I wonder? Huh? I glance back at the sudden question and see Cohen making breakfast. I didn't really see any external signs of injuries, but you can never be too careful. I guess I feel. That's true that I'm in a coma when Cohen found me, and then getting chased down by huge monsters? So I try stretching my shoulders, crack my neck with a couple twists of my head. Well, it seems like everything still works. You sure? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just muscle weight more than anything else, really. My offhand dismissal seems to get a giggle from Kuon. Maybe I tried too hard to sound macho. I'm relieved to hear that. Then let's leave after breakfast, shall we? Wait, leave? Leave to where? Staying here would be a bad idea, so we'll head to a village just nearby. So it's close. Yep, walking distance. I see. I mean, I just thought... You thought what? Kind of figured you lived here, Kuon. Oh, so I suppose I look like some backwoods hermit who lives up in the mountains, is that it? Kuon's eyes narrow, her gaze fixed on me. Well, don't let me stop you. If you want us to live in a tent, then by all means. How bad, Haku? It sounds like a joke when she says, but her smile doesn't reach her eyes. Wait, hold on. Let's stop it a minute. Haha, <laughs> it's just a joke. I just stopped by since I'm on a journey. But now that you're here, we better head to town. A journey, huh? Well, maybe someone at the village might know more about me. Who knows? Maybe this is all it'll take to clear this up. Are you finally about to let me actually play the game now? <laughs> okay, then. While I'm working on breakfast, can you load up, load him up with our baggage haku? Him? I tilt my head, mused. Well, I don't see anyone around here except us. Sheep rise or furry ostrich, everybody. Holy! What the heck is this ostrich looking thing? I don't know if Ostrich Prime here thinks I'm it's dinner, but it keeps trying to take a bite out of me. Ostrich? I don't know what you mean. It's just my steed. Steed? What, like a horse? How could this thing be a... Well, no, just look at Kuan. I guess if she says it's a horse, it is. God, I can feel common sense draining away with every minute I spend here. After breakfast, we pack up the tent, and with the sun low in the sky, we set up with an ostrich. He can't get over it. By the way, is this really okay? What could that mean, I wonder? Well, you said you're on some journey. I hope I'm not messing up any of your plans here. Kuan responds easily, like it's nothing. I didn't come to this forest for anything important. You're just a little detour, so don't worry. Oh, really? Yes, it's not a focused journey anyway. I'm just going wherever the day takes me, you know? Of course. There's something I like to accomplish, but it's nothing too urgent. Most of all, I just want to feel the air of the new lands, see and hear things I have never experienced. Do things I can only do now, so I won't have any regrets. She speaks while staring ahead somewhere off in the distance. She's probably one of those people like, hey, I'm going to take a trip, and when I get home, I probably won't be able to take this trip again, so I'm doing whatever, whatever the hell I want right now. Still, whatever the reason may be, a young girl like out, like her out here on some trip all by herself, there's a lot of danger out here. I learned that myself just yesterday. I could understand if it were just paved city streets, but hiking over this huge mountain? I don't know. You know, 
I'm about to bring up my concerns. But Kuan suddenly comes to a halt. She extends her arm out to the side, signaling for me to stop. What the? Wild dogs? No wolves. I'm no biologist, but it's safe to say there's something close. Hey, what do we do? Do about... what? Ah, oh, I get it. You think you'll be fine. These aren't much to worry about. You think? Sure. Just wait will stick around and they'll scatter. Still, they're coming at us while this is really annoying. Let me just drive them off. It shouldn't take too long. Now, nah, let me give you a hand. He really just pulls up a stick. <laughs> up until now, I've had it pretty rough. Sorry guys, but it's time for some stress relief. Look away, animal lovers. Test of will. I learned. Oh, so neither one can be defeated. Okay, I guess we press whatever. I guess there's nothing else to press right now. Two arms! Falcon has been added to the system menu. You can find information on the basic mechanics of the tutorial. I can't reach you? Oh, wait, never mind. Can I, like, do that back? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, boy, fetch the stick! Oh, wait, was I supposed to press a button? Oh, snap. Crap. Fine, well, we'll just let that go. We'll just let that go. Now, fiend, taste the strike of justice. Raw! Take this, ultimate chest and slash. <laughs> the thing's not even budging. Haku, I think that's enough playing around. She's probably like, there's no way you're that weak. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, Miss Kuan? Hmm? My attacks don't seem to be, you know, doing anything. Haku. I know that I know you that are weak, but we should really take this seriously. It doesn't pay to be overconfident. Oh no! She's like, there's no way you're that weak. But I'm trying my best here. Ah! Oh, he's looking so bad in front of right now, like, dude. This is when you just. You just walk away. And now she's like, I don't think you're playing around. She's like, oh my god, you actually might be actually that weak. You little sissy boy. <laughs> uh, you never want a girl to look like this when you're trying to be macho in front of her ever. You just, you just lost so many points. Hey, wait a sec. What's the deal? I thought these guys were supposed to be weak. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, is that me attacking?
I might really need to look at this tutorial. Ooh! Trophy Earn is super effective. Ooh, and she gets a second turn, too. <laughs> Trophy Earn, critically acclaimed. And you just finish them off. Earth's favor. Okay. I'll let Haku have this last one. Apparently not. Never mind. He's gonna finish them all off. her eyes, straining her big ears as she listens. Yes, I don't think there are any more nearby. Okay. I sat to the ground. Thought I was gonna die there. Uh, well done? I'm gonna offer some kind of flash, seeing my seated and trying to catch my breath. I take it with a grumble. Maybe I'm sulking a little. It wasn't anything like you said. What I said? Just a second ago. Although, oh, just the wave will stick around and they'll scatter. So much for scattering. They tried to maul me. They didn't even care with the DM stick. I could have died. But I was telling the truth. They tried to ambush people and then they attack in packs, but they're really not that big of a deal. That wasn't a big deal? Couldn't glance at me dubiously. Haku, maybe you're a bit, uh... Ah, uh, no, never mind. I think she's like, ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't tell him this. Not sure what she was about to say, but I'll act like I didn't hear. I've got a good guess, anyway. <laughs> You're still recovering, after all. Not quite back to normal. You seem unused to it, all this. Man, she's blaming all of it. Maybe, maybe you're just tired. I mean, you were just in a coma. Maybe, you know, a little exercise and you'll be back on your feet. Man. Well, perhaps all you need is a bit of practice. You'll be driving them off easily. Like I said, I'd ever want to go through that again. All right, we should go back to the road soon. What, already? Can we just rest a little longer? My legs are weak and they're shaking slightly. I wouldn't mind, but if we take much longer, the sun will set. Are you okay with that? It means we'll be traveling in darkness and there's a good chance we've run into more of them. A pierce scoured, but the sun is nowhere near the horizon. And this village is pretty close by, you said. Right, not much farther now, I think. And he doesn't believe it. He was like, you just told me that they're pretty weak. And I couldn't even leave a scratch. You said this village is pretty close. And that if we don't go now, we, we, would, we won't be there until nightfall. I think we have different definitions on what things are weak and how close is close. Glenn meets my eyes with a look a polite confusion. She seems honest enough. It'll be fine, just a little farther, that's all.
Trophy earned, test of will. Just how long have we been walking? The sun is dipping toward the horizon, but the village Kuan mentioned is nowhere in sight. It feels like we've been walking for miles, but Kuan looks like she hasn't even broken a sweat. She's been hiking at quite a clip, too. Me on her hand. I don't exactly have much stamina to begin with, but on top of that, my feet. I drive my feet as I walk. They're as heavy as lead. I can't exactly complain when a girl half my size is keeping pace effortlessly. I shouldn't whine, but... Hey, Kuan? Hmm? Kuan glances over her shoulder without stopping. Uh, how should I put this? We've been walking for a while now, and, um... Is the village close? Hmm? Almost. We should be coming up on it soon. Just a little further, I think. Really? Just a little further. She really does mean just a little, right? <laughs> I'm starting to figure out that my sense of scale is way different from Kuan's. <sighs> Finally, we made it. I fall to the ground as soon as we cross the threshold, my head sore beyond reason. I made it. You go, me. You done good. That is a very fat rooster. It should be okay to praise myself for making it this far, right? I pushed myself the whole way. Hey, you didn't push yourself too hard, right? Gwen looks over at me with concern as I sit on the ground exhausted. Huh? No, no, no. Not at all. I'm good. Totally fine. I stamp in a hurry, denying her accusation. She's choosing these moments to sound so concerned delivery, and she makes it hard to feel good about whining. Really? Let's keep going then. Not much further to go, I promise. But that Gwen smiles mischievously and turns back to the path moving onward. She isn't doing this on purpose, right? The road is a simple dirt one, probably common in royal visions like this. Patches of snow still adorn the town. It looks not rich, honestly, but probably comforts living. Here we are. Kuan comes to a stop to an old building, a colorful piece of cloth hanging from its eaves. What's this place? An inn? Places with this mark are always inns. It'll probably be good for you to remember that. She indicates the pattern on the hang strip of fabric. Inside is a large open space lined with tables, probably meant to serve as a mess hall or tavern. It's a lot more comfortable than I thought it'd be. While I glance around, Quinn makes for what looks like a reception desk and pulls on a hanging cord. A voice from somewhere else in the building shouts, Coming! And soon a woman appears from another room. Oh wow, you are really pretty. Oh, Miss Kuan, welcome back. I'm sorry for not coming more quickly, dear. We've been terribly busy as all. Please don't worry about it. Here, these are the medical herbs you asked me to go get. Oh, thank you, you're a lifesaver, you are. The innkeeper happily takes the pouch that Kuan offers me, weighing it with a scale. Hmm. Looks like it comes out to about 400, but I'll throw in a bonus and make it 450 for you. Ah, uh, thank you. I should be one thanking you, dear. Our stock was nearly out. You really came just in time. Please don't worry about it. Just hearing you say that makes it all worth it. Will you stay the night? The room we had for you last time is available. That would be fu- Oh, but there's two of us this time. Is that okay? Two? Hmm. In the same room, if that's possible. The innkeeper only just then seems to notice me. It gives me a puzzled look. Wait, what was that she just said about being in the same room? It's a long story. Puts me off on the way back, basically. Wait, wait, hold on. Is something wrong? She's in a room with a guy? Sure you're okay with that? It's not weird? Why would that be weird? She's staring at me with genuine bemerment. Is it really not that big of a deal? 
I mean, wouldn't you prefer to be on your own rather than bunk with a total stranger? But you are a total stranger. Besides, we slept in the same tent while I was taking care of you. So I figure, why make a big deal of it now? But that, but that as it may, you aren't like worried you'll be washed while changing or molested. Or <laughs> it's like you're not making a very good case for yourself right now. Planning to molest me, Haku? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't mean, damn it. You know exactly what I meant and you're just messing with me, aren't you? Whatever could you be talking about? I knew it. You don't seem to be the vulgar type, and I doubt you bite the hand that fed you, so I'm not worried. Or just hang up a piece of fabric or something for privacy. Or is it that you just don't want to stay with me? Uh, she's just trying to blindside me now. Maybe she does trust me, but I don't have a leg to stand on to respond to a comment like that. Who do you think is paying for them anyway? It'd be wasteful to pay for two. Oh, uh, yeah, man, that is that is pretty true. She's like, I'm not paying for two rooms. That's more money coming out, out of my pocket. Just the one room, please. Sure thing, you must be tired, so why don't you go and take advantage of the best? We'll last for a while. I'll put my heart into making a good meal for you, so please look forward to dinner. We will. Before we do, though, do you have any chores around the inn you need taken care of? Huh? Any manual labor or errands you have are fine, just as long as you can get them done before dark. Don't tell me she's going to work after making that grueling hike. I don't get it. What's up with her stamina? Well, let's see. It's getting late, so there's really only the children's chores. Will that do? Yes, that would be fine. But I'm already exhausted. Let me rest, please! Quinn speaks with the Incubate a while longer, then switches her tail in my direction, smiling. Alright then, let's get to work. Quinn leads me to a squat stone building near the edge of town. It seems to be a storehouse. Multiple bags are stacked high inside. A few lie open, seemingly full of tiny seed-like grains. The innkeeper wants eight of these bags carried over to the mill. I see. These, huh? That's right. She said that, it, that it's nothing, but each set looks like it weighs a ton. I'm surprised she wants to work after walking all day. I wouldn't be able to even if I tried. Yep, eight of these. Over to the mill. She's like, hurry up and get to it. Uh, she wants me to help her. I'm exhausted. I can barely move for crying out loud, but I'm indebted to her, and it would be bad form to just stand and watch. She's taking care of me, after all. Alright, let me help a bit then. Huh? Hasn't started to look on her face. Was she not expecting me to offer to help? I said, let me help you out a bit. Going just stares in amazement from her, then smiles and nods. Hmm, thanks, I appreciate it. Could you take eight of these bags over to the mill then? Sure, just eight, if you please. Hey, that's actually quite a few. Wait a sec, eight? Wait, you mean all of them? Best of luck. Wait, wait, hold up. Don't give me best of luck and bail. You even do all the work. Huh? Don't haunt me. I said I help, not do all the work for you. Um, Haku, I accept this job for your sake. I'm not too keen on taking that away from you. What? For my sake? What does she mean by that? I thought that being taken care of all that time might be weighing on you, so I wanted to help. If you had some work to do and earn your keep with, you wouldn't have to feel that way, right? Well, that was completely unnecessary. It's not like I feel emasculated or guilty or anything like that. Either way, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this on my own. I'm going to need her help. The only jobs Inker had left were children's chores, but it's better than nothing. Children's chores. I look over the huge heavy bags and each sack of armful filled to the brim. Something wrong? Kids carry these? That just shows how strong their species is. The fact that kids can just lift that up and just kind of be like, whatever. Huh? Yeah, when they want to work for a little pocket money, yeah. I, I don't mean anything by it. I just want you to know why it's the only job left. 
Kuhn has that last part pretty quickly. I get the feeling she thinks she's hurt my masculinity. Come on, though. If this is just kids' chores, the bed must be way lighter than they look. Can't be that bad. I guess I better just get over with. <laughs> I stand corrected. They are not lights. The mill isn't far from here, but it's not close either. I have to make the trip eight times with bags as heavy. That doesn't seem like a work a child could help with, let alone do on their own. Haku, Kuan, how exactly is this a chore for children? Are you pulling my leg? Um... Glenn gives an innocent reply and avert her eyes. Why you? I knew it. He's probably still recovering. Yeah, it's not as fortunate, but that must be it. Hey, don't avoid the question. We can't have you overzearing yourself, so sit there while I carry them, okay? Hey, I'll talk to you. And she's already gone. Jeez, I won't say no to a sit down, but I can't say that I'm not annoyed. I managed to wrap myself and chase after her. Huh? The sight of Cohen stacking multiple Norse bags onto her shoes brings me inside the stir house. Whew. Wow, she's making you look so weak right now. She tosses sack after sack onto a pile of her shoulders as though they were as light as bean bags. Coming through Kuan the the remaining sin bags piled high on her shoulders, bounce everything past me onto the out the door. What? A children's chore? Okay, right. I'm just gonna act like I didn't see that. We finished moving them to the mill, ma'am. Welcome back, Ichu. Thanks for taking care of that. You were you were gone longer than I thought you'd be, though. Did something happen? Yeah. I slowed us down, obviously. Took a little detour, is all. I thought I'd show Hawk around the village. Is that so? We're a small town at best, so there's not much to show, I'm afraid. Oh, but I like it here. It reminds me of a place from my childhood. It's a nice feeling. Ah, what a sweet thing to say. Now let me tally up your bill. Four and fifty cent for the pants I asked for. There's a for the grass, got me mushrooms, and then the kunjiki berries for two and four. 43 sen. The innkeeper lines up a handful of stick with objects as she speaks. Calculator, I guess. It's awfully primitive one, though. And 30 sen each for those grain bags. 10 times 8 is 24. 3 sen. Seems like a pitiful amount, amount next to the rest. I guess it really is just pocket money for kids. Lodgings for the night or 720 sen in what? Will you be doing for food? Please include that as well. For two people, food is 80 cents, which brings your total bill to 800. Then, uh, subtract so the 800 from the total for your herbs I bought for you, 568 cents. It's 550 cents, I think. Hmm? Hmm? No, it's 568. <laughs> 450 plus. 338 plus 313 plus 243 plus 24 minus 800 is 568. There's no mistaking it. Haha, uh -huh. sorry, Kuhn, but you're off by a bit. I may not look it, but I'm pretty good with numbers. I can do mental calculations on this easily, even with my eyes closed. I don't think it matters whether your eyes are open or not. The answer is 557 sen. You'll see. Carry the one, and I owe you 568 sen. The eager looks up from the calculating sticks. She's like, oh, what? She is baffled beyond words. Here, please take this. The innkeeper fills a pouch with various different sized coins, holding it out toward Kuan. Kuan's face gradually reddens. I am, um, didn't mean, what I meant to say was, it was just ten here. Why are you getting so worked up? Everyone makes careless mistakes. Well, like I said, I didn't make a mistake. I'm just careless is all. That's right. Everyone makes mistakes. It can't be helped. That was expected, Haku. I didn't know you could do catch on the fly like that. 
Unexpected? That was a simple one. No big deal. If that's your idea, simple. Are you good at arithmetic, Haku? I don't know about good. I mean, it's just math, right? Anyone could have solved that. I don't know. Um, I wasn't pretty good at math either. Uh, so maybe it's just you, Haku. Uh. While Kuma may be smiling at me, her eyebrows are twitching slightly. I mean, uh, never mind. Could you follow me for a second? She's about to beat your ass. <laughs> Kuma grabs my hand and pulls me along before I can give an answer. Hey, wait! Just come with me. If you can do that much in your head, I want to see how you do with real problems. And we'll figure out what's going on with those real problems in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, then please don't hesitate to destroy that like and subscribe button. Uh, I really want to see where this is going. So if you guys do too, then I'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later.